Whoopal's cat. Food and preppers. Just want to talk a little bit about the complacency, which I did uh, yesterday, but I'm also going to talk a little bit more detail today. So it'll be a little bit boring with some graphs for Team Foco. So stay tuned and let's enjoy a rounded talk on prepping and food. These pictures are not my idea of what prepping is, nor is it my idea of what you should be doing in terms of food storage. You can spend a huge amount of money getting a very small variety of heavily processed foods and think you've got food storage sorted out. I would argue you haven't. There are other ideas to do this cheaper, but again, good nutrition is always going to be more than storing dehydrated broccoli or dehydrated whatever it is. It has a place to have dehydrated food, but what your principal goal should be is to eat food, grow food, and enjoy food. As soon as you process food, it's not really that healthy. Now the first thing you need to do is, if you're a prepper is to stop eating the standard American diet. It is an unhealthy diet. It has been proven to be an unhealthy diet. It costs you a huge amount of life expectancy and critically healthy years at the end of your life. Don't eat food that is going to make you suffer from diabetes, obesity, osteoarthritis, cardiac disease, stroke, and of course cancer. So you shouldn't be eating fast food, ever. You shouldn't be eating it as an occasional treat. It is not a treat. It's a globule of fat that's heavily processed, full of sugar, in an unrefined form, and salt. It's really not a good thing. Stop eating fast food. Fast food is not good for you. This includes buying pizza from pizza places globuled with cheese. If you're going to have pizza, make your own. It's a lot cheaper and you have control of what goes into it. You can even make a much healthier food stuff than you can buying it and it shows up 20 minutes later. Think about it. If that pizza costs six dollars and is delivered in 20 minutes and everybody makes it, owns the franchise and delivers it and pays for the gasoline and making a good profit off it, what are you eating? Now food production globally and food per person globally has been rising and we're doing well with that to the point where now we're actually wasting a huge amount of food. So you could argue that in a minor SHTF we will actually not be wasting food and might actually be eating healthier. It might actually do our health good. Now the reason I mention this is World War II saw an increase in life expectancy in the socialistly controlled United Kingdom because the government controlled all food sales and all imports and rationed what people could have. So the health of the population improved remarkably during the war years for those countries that could still get a minimum calorie intake wasn't quite the same elsewhere in the world. So a lot of the companies that are making processed foods that aren't healthy are actually pushing the good old myth of 2,000 calories per adult per day. Don't be fooled. Look at this graph. I need 3,000 calories a day. Kitty, Kitty won't need 2,000 calories a day until she's 70. And I would argue when Kitty is 70, she'll have significant muscle mass and be doing significant exercise compared to most 70 year olds. So she's going to need more than 2,000 calories. Don't be trapped into thinking 2,000 calories a day is some sort of gold standard. It's a minimal survivalist, low calorie diet that's going to see you lose fat and then muscle in a prolonged grid down. You need three to 4,000 calories. Not easy, but entirely doable. So now we get into the whole prepper thing. Now, as you saw from the video yesterday, if you didn't watch it, why not? It's actually a good one. It gets inside my pantry. What you shouldn't be doing is storing 25 years shelf life food. If you're storing food for three months to six months to a year, you store 25 years shelf life food for three reasons. One, because you're storing 25 years worth of food, which a very few preppers are doing, some are. Or, you're too lazy to go through your prepping supplies, so you just buy it to throw it away so it's there as a form of insurance. Kind of realistic for most people. The third major error here people do is that they buy 25 years shelf life food and use it frequently and keep replacing it. 
buy actual food, go to a grocery store, don't have them deliver it in a box, that's really bad for the environment, and also increase your costs. Buy actual food and use actual food. Most foods last six months to three years stored in reasonable conditions. There's no particular reason why you can't have a three year supply of food in your house that you actually are eating on a regular basis. Think about what you're storing and what the point of it is. Now you'll see videos like this all the time and there's a reasonable place for them. Any tiny amount of soil with a bit of experience and a bit of trial will provide a significant amount of your calories. This is an exaggeration, um, but reasonably holds true. So what you need to do is you need a large amount of soil and you need a large amount of seeds and you need to have some experience growing food and then you have to have some experiences harvesting food and then you need to be able to preserve food. Where I am in Canada, we have about a th four to five month growing season. So that period of time has to grow me enough food for the full 12 months. Without cash, without gasoline, without trade, I'm going to starve pretty quick unless I grow enough food in three to four or five months period of time to last me the entire year and give me a reserve in case harvests fail, which they do. Well, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere and it hits in October or after October before April, you probably won't lose any major growing season. The next major growing season, providing what the SHTF is, uh, you will be able to grow harvest and food. So technically you only need the amount of food that you have to get you through to the next harvest, which is going to be 15 months. Now why do I say 15 months? This is because depending on when it hits, if it hits in April, you have to go an entire year where I live before you can replant in the following April. I'm then adding on three months growing time before I'm actually getting food. So I'm saying the minimum amount of food you require is 15 months. Now we are lucky because most SHTFs won't last 15 months. They'll last a week or two or maybe a couple of months. North America supplies pretty much most of the extra food on the planet. If there's no food production out in North America, pretty much within six to three months to a year, you're going to see starvation riding all across the globe, which could lead to a nuclear war, etc., etc. Don't fall into that escalating trap. That's a trap prep is put into. The issue is there's been no harvest this year because of volcanic activity or a nuclear winter or just plain climate change. Can you feed your family for a year to 15 months? The answer should be yes, I can easily. You should have the dry goods in, you should be able to forage, you should be able to hunt, you should be able to fish, you should be able to trap. But what you really need to do is to be able to find soil and irrigation water and grow for seeds that you already have. The little emergency tins of seeds are better than nothing. They're quite expensive. Go in the fall to a seed store, a garden store, and buy lots of heirloom seeds and just keep them in the freezer in Ziploc bags. Sure, over years they will fail, but some of them won't. And when they don't fail and they grow because you practice seed saving, you'll grow more plants. Hurricanes, ice storms, etc., etc., can be regional and even national in scale and scope. But for most people, if you are prepping, if you have 28 days food supply in and 28 days water supply, the ability to keep warm and dry during those 28 days, you're effectively prepped. If you want to go beyond that, you're going into cloud cuckoo land. You're going into fall of society. I do think that if you haven't got 28 days supply of food and water in your house, you're negligent, especially if you have children. You basically hope that somebody else is going to feed them for you if there's a major ice storm. Don't expect that to happen. There's four major areas of complacency that I want to cover. Supply chain, harvest fail, your generalized health, and the ability to feed yourself. So let's get into this. So you shouldn't have insufficient food at home to cope inadequately with supply chain failures. And by supply chain failures, what I mean is uh, a national truck strike that goes on for three weeks, or a port strike. Any of those human-caused or weather-related events that break the supply of food getting into the grocery warehouses and then to the grocery stores, you should be able to ride that out with what you have in your regular pantry. This is not me talking about a prepper store. This is me talking about what you should have in your kitchen. Again, I'm referring you to yesterday's video. Now one of the main causes of this for preppers 
is the inability to actually focus on food as the primary prep. What they're focusing on is hunter-gathering or fishing as a primary prep. All three of those things may not be that realistic for you to do in a short-term SHTF. They may not be safe to do in a long-term SHTF, depending. What is safe is to have a source of food in your home for 28 days to feed you, your family and your pets and anybody else you want to feed, like your neighbours. That's entirely doable and you need to focus on that before you focus on getting a second gun or an extra 10,000 rounds of ammunition or a bunch of MREs. You need to take care of food. Food is the one thing you cannot figure out on your own in the wilds. You're going to need technology and you need a lot of luck and you're going to need no competition and cooperative weather to survive with no food. Okay, I'm going to say it. Paleo diet is a fad diet. You lose weight. It will kill you. There's a tiny handful of physicians that are promoting it. They've been entrapped by the idea. And what most people are eating in the paleo diet has got nothing to do with the paleo diet. The paleo diet would be a diet that humans could do in the wild without spears and without preserving technology. Said it. The only diet that has been proven to increase human longevity and human quality of health is a vegan or a semi-vegan diet. So I beg you to consider the diet you have in the now. Is it making you the healthiest it can be? So prepping requires that you look at food seriously. Look at it as the number one security threat issue. No food takes away very quickly the ability to react and adapt. You cannot eat bullets in SHTF. You might think you can, but you can't. You can hunt, but hunting will be difficult. Being able to grow and sprout food and store it and eat it and preserve it and make delicious meals out of it. I hope you can. If you can't, what are you thinking? Why are you even trying to survive? Without modern technology to supply you wants, you're going to be in deep doo-doo. You need to know how to cook. You need to know what nutrition is good and what nutrition is not good. Focus on this a lot more. The prepping videos on food get very few video watches. The ones on which type of gun to select get huge amounts. It's a major prepping complacency. This is one that gets very, very little airplay, is to know your local area. What are your local growing seasons, what's growing wild and where and how locally, to know what soil type you have, what soil types are available. And that is part of food prepping for a disaster, is to know where to get alternative supplies of food. For example, I don't have as many nettles up here as I'd like. We have a few, but they're starting to come in. But nettles are an excellent, excellent source of iron. Did you know that? If you have nettles growing wild near you, you should be looking at what nettles can do and how to use them in grid down. If you have berry bushes near you, how do you use them? How can you preserve the fruit without technology? Remember, pressure canning may not be available to you in grid down. Now this is the major one for a lot of people, is that you have a store of food and it's all in one place. So if there's a fire or a flood or somebody comes in and takes your food, you don't have any food left. So I've said this before, and I'll say it again, you've got to know your local environment. For me, when I cache food, I bury it in the ground in small amounts scattered widely, not in the garden, but around the edges of the property. I know I can get a year to two years supply of food without compromising my safety, digging it up if the house or the bug out location has been taken. Complacency with this, a big huge wad of food in the basement, one major water break and you've lost all your food. There's been many, many preppers who've spent thousands of dollars on food preps only to have them all burned to the ground in a wildfire. If they were buried three to four foot underground, most of them, their preps would have been intact after the fire. Handling now and practice it, not in SHTF. In SHCF, you better know how to handle food and how to avoid getting infection. I'm also going to point out this, and I mentioned it yesterday. Learn safe food handling, because otherwise you'll probably die. And a lot of people are going to die from waterborne diseases and foodborne diseases because of inadequate knowledge and inadequate practice with good food hygiene safety practices. So that's it for me. Remember in SHTF, tomorrow will always be a lot worse than, it, than today. Unless you prep. So you need to prep. And food prepping is the number one prep. Not security, food. You can have all the security you like if your belly's empty 
it's not going to take long for you to fail in SHTF. If you have food, you probably want to look at security. But if you don't have food, everything else becomes null and void. The same of course is true for water. I live in Ontario, in Canada. I'm not bothered about water. If you live in Arizona, you need to maybe have water as your number one prep. You may be needing to put aside 10,000 gallons of potable water for SHTF. I certainly don't need to do that. But I do need fats, good nutrition and a variety of foods up here or I'm going to die. If I haven't got adequate food storage and I can't get more food, I am going to die. No matter how good I've prepped or how good my skills are. I know people will disagree with that. Feel free to do so. Toodles. Life is hard, and so am I. You'd better give me.